heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, so today was the second press conference. Uh, I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I know some of you will be joining in a few minutes here, but you guys mostly going to have to catch this one on archive, man, because I'm literally not going to be on here that long. I know I say that, and then I end up being on here for an hour, but tonight, really not going to be on here that long. All right, so let me get right to it, all right? Um, the second presser, uh, I think they're going to hit, what, London tomorrow or something like that? or what? Um, So the first one's in Saudi Arabia. M. Reynolds was good, man. Um, first was in Saudi, and then they just had one in New York, all right? Now, first thing, these guys' personalities is going to give us a bland presser, all right? So there's going to be no fireworks. The one in Saudi was just, just the atmosphere was just, it was just off a little bit. It was just kind of weird. It was, it was, it was really off, man, the one in Saudi, in my opinion. The one in New York, uh, you know, Shannon Briggs added a little bit of spice to it, you know, with the Let's Go Champ. It was good to see Shannon. He gives off that positive energy. Uh, even called Andy Ruiz El Champion, you know what I mean, when Ruiz was talking. So he was showing love to both fighters. I know, uh, you know, he's cool with AJ, so he's showing, you know, showing AJ some support, you know what I mean? But also looked like he was, you know, giving Ruiz a little props as well. All right, so it was good to see Shannon. He was probably the most entertaining thing of the whole presser. You dig what I'm saying? Look at him, look at him, talk to him, champ. You know what I mean? He was like the most exciting thing. Their personalities are not going to give us a, a scintillating uh, type of presser, man. You know what I mean? These type of guys that need somebody to to uh, go off of. You know, they they need like a Dillian White, a Jarrell Miller, somebody like that to press their buttons or try to press their buttons to make them say some, uh, you know, uh, you know, just to make them say some things just, you know, we're talking about. But uh, yeah, and these type of dudes, they're just going to handle their business on fight night, man. You dig what I'm saying? So the next presser tomorrow will be another bland PC say the right things type of comment. I mean, a uh, type of presser, and that's and that, and that's cool. You know what I mean? I now I'd rather see a Derek Jasur versus Dillian White type of presser. You know what I mean? Just for, to give us something to talk about, but um, really not going to be much. That's pretty much it on that man. And let me just speak about Tony Yoka coming back. I'm gonna get back to AJ and Ruiz. Want to speak about something again on that, but. Let me just get this in there. Tony Yoko will be taking on Michelle Wallace at the uh, towards the end of this month, I believe uh, the 28th of September. Uh, good to see Yoka back. You know what I mean? He's only had six fights, but he's been in there with a tough journeyman like uh, Jonathan Rice. Got the stoppage over Dave Allen, and he also beat Demetrenko. So those are some pretty decent fights for guys only had six fights. You know what I mean? He's being fast-tracked like Herkovic and Joe Joyce. He's taking that route those guys that came out of that Olympic class, you dig what I'm saying, of 2016, all right? So um, he's going to be back to be taking on Michelle Wallace. Wallace has, well, he's had three fights. His back-to-back -back losses to Christian Hammer, and he also suffered a loss to F.A. at Jagba, another uh, uh, outstanding prospect at Jagba. Um, then he came back and he beat some journeyman, I uh, forget the guy's name, but his weight wasn't off. That's one thing I was looking at was Wallace's weight. Like, will his weight be all, you know, would he balloon to 270 or 265? No, he was still in the 240s, you know what I mean, for his fight against the journeyman. He was in the 240s, I believe, for both of his losses. Um, a Jaguar just too heavy-handed for him, put too much pressure on him, and Christian Hammer pretty much just beat the fight out of him. Wallace has some moments there, but Hammer had the experience, and he just kind of just kept the pressure on Wallace. And I think Yoka, who has the ability to move and, go, you know, fight off, his back foot a little bit. I think uh, Hunter, Virgil Hunter, is going to have him aggressive and have him have him be the stalker and try to walk down Michelle Wallace and put pressure on him with speed and you know angle off with his head moving and things like that. Things like that. But I think he'll put the pressure on Wallace and I think he'll get the stoppage. You know what I mean? Wallace was once upon a time was an undefeated German prospect before he suffered the two losses. You know what I mean? Uh, he was in the same class with Ajay Kabayel and Tom Schwartz and guys like that. You know, I know they got a new kid, uh, Peter Kaburu who was in the Olympics in 2016, you know what I mean? So, but anyways, yeah, man, um, on that. All right, now, uh, let me see. Yeah, they really didn't say anything interesting with AJ and Ruiz. I'm trying to think of just some sound bites they had, man. Because, you know, after the press, they did, you know, uh, interviews with Fight Hype and all these other uh, media outlets, man. So I'm trying to think. Uh, wasn't really nothing noteworthy. I, will, I know AJ says something about, if he wins this fight, he doesn't want to hear about Fury and Wilder. And my thing is a shout out to my man, uh, EJ Boxing Live. I was just on his channel. Uh, he had a panel on there, B Marsh and Danny Man Boxing and some few other cats. 
And uh, we all had different opinions on it. But my thing is this, man. You saying that you you know you don't hear anything about those guys. Now you can look at it in two ways, but the one way I'm looking at it is, you know, people say, uh, you know, address the elephant in the room. That's like the damn battleship in the room, or the uh, you know what I mean, the, the the damn Empire State Building in the room. You have to talk about Wilder and Fury. You'll have no choice, and it is proven, based off what Anthony Joshua said, is he was think his fight with Ruiz. He said in the back of his mind, he was thinking about what Wilder did did to Brazil. What does that tell me as a fan? It lets me know that you're going to be thinking about Wilder regardless. So you can say what you want, but as a man, when you're alone and you're thinking about these things and thinking about your peers in the division, you're going to think about the opposition. You dig what I'm saying? Um, so I know AJ can get into the continuity of, you know, going off on his uh, philosophical soliloquies, and that's cool. And, I, you know, his uh, interpretation of the mindset of a champion, and, that, and that's cool. If all that has worked for him up until this point, the way AJ looks and perceives the sports and the things he says, that's that's fine. He's a grown man, he can, do, he can do what he wants. But I'm just looking at it as these dudes are also competitors. And there's no way as a competitor you want anybody to be walking around saying that Wilder and Fury are better than you. Just as a competitor. I'm not talking about negotiations and Eddie Hearn and DeZone and Al Hammond. I'm talking about is the athlete, man. The athlete is an athlete. You don't want that. So you damn right he's going to be thinking about those guys just like Wilder and Fury are also thinking about him as well in some way, shape, or form. They can say whatever they want, but you know, as an athlete in your own division, of course they're going to be thinking about the opposition. You dig what I'm saying? Um, and now, again, now maybe he's looking at it from the point of, hey, if I win this fight, Eddie Hearn and, and I, we're trying to get something going on with Usyk, being that Usyk beats Tyrone Spong next, next, next month. Because I think that would be the next move. I know Wilder is wants to rematch, or he's going to rematch Luis Ortiz. And then after that, there was that news that came out. Uh, I was hearing the rumor that uh, Wilder and Fury sh should be a go in like February. That's the rumor I was hearing. All right, so that's not written in stone, but that's what it was being put out there. Um, you know, uh, proliferating throughout the boxing world. You get what I'm saying? So, um, so maybe he's looking at it from the standpoint of, hey man, if I win this fight. Wilder and Fury are probably going to be tied up with each other. So maybe he's saying it like that. Like, I don't want to hear about that because they're going to be doing their own thing anyways. But even, even, if that, even if they fight fucking three times in a row, two times in a row, you're still going to have to cross that bridge. And look, man, Wilder, AJ, and Fury, no matter how we look back on this in seven to ten years from now, when we look back on this crop and on this era of heavyweights, um, should one, two, or three, maybe all of them maybe still fighting in seven to ten years. But right now, this is like their primes, right? So when we go back and look at this, these guys are the pillars of this era. Wilder, Fury, and Joshua. No matter how this turns out, whether AJ ends up with the more successful career at the end, or and I guess it's up to you as a fan how you measure success. Is it by the boxing boxer's record? Is it by their record and or how much money they've gained? However, you determine that. Uh, so whoever's more successful at the end, we don't know. All right. But what I do know is the three biggest names. Uh, they made the most noise so far. I know Ruiz sparked the upset, but uh, that energy was created from beating a guy like AJ, man. So they're the pillars of this era and they have to fight each other. This is our version of this is this era's version of Tyson, Holyfield, Lennox, uh, Ali, Frazier, Foreman. You dig what I'm saying? Um so, yeah, they're going to all have to fight each other. Well, Wilder and Fury already got it on. They're going to have a rematch. And they may have to fight each other multiple times. You dig what I'm saying? So, we'll see how all this plays out, man. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to think of anything else that was noteworthy, man. Uh, not much. Everything I've already heard, they've already said a million times. Joshua was being Joshua, you know, with his uh, philosophies on different things. And Andrew Ruiz was being Andrew Ruiz. You know, happy-go-lucky. Giving off, the, I'm just happy to be here with that smile. <laughs> This dude to take your fucking head off, but he's just smiling. You know what I mean? Like uh, he won't harm a fly. But that's always been Andy, y'all. That's always been Andy, man. He just, yeah. Even when I interviewed him, when I did that interview with him uh, going into the Joseph Parker fight, you would have thought he just, you know, I'm just happy to be here. That's just his personality. But when he gets in that ring, motherfucker's an animal, man. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, the, the next presser in, in uh, the UK is going to be the same way. Let me see what y'all talking about. This not going to be long. I'm 10 minutes in. I'll probably go another five minutes, man. So let me say what's up to the family, man. M. Reynolds, what it do, bro? Philip Redden was good. 
Black Ham TV in the building. Mala 2243 was good. Uh, Black Ham says Ruiz wins again. Mala 2243 says Ruiz looked fat in the face. <laughs> Hold on, Mala. I can't even get through that, man. Andrew, when has Andy not looked fat in the face, man? You know what I mean? Hey, and just one more thing about how these guys, they need like somebody that will get under their skin a little bit to make them say something in a presser. Look, man, I remember after a, a fight Ruiz had in Detroit, he fought uh, Nathan Gormley, or I'm sorry, Josh Gormley. Uh, I was going to say Nathan Gormley, but Josh Gormley in Detroit, Michigan. And after the fight, I actually did a video and I put the photo up of it. Jarrell Miller jumped in the ring and grabbed the mic and got it into Ruiz's face. And he still is just like, hey, you know, well, you know, we can get a, a fight signed. And he's just, it's, it's hard to roll for that dude's feathers, man. Maybe you got to know something personal about him to get under his skin, but just random shit talk, like, you're a fighter anyway, so you can talk the most shit. You still got to get in there and fight. You know what I mean? You still, still got to get punched in the face, but uh, let me go ahead and finish what you said. But yeah, man, when does he not look chubby in the face? But he says uh, he, he looked fat in the face. I hope he starts his camp this week. That will give Ruiz 12-week camp. Uh, which will be great for him. And he came in kind of heavy for the AJ fight, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? So, Philip Redden says, uh, but yeah, I totally agree. I want to, both these guys to have a good camp, man. I, I think he has more than enough time to get in there and get ready. You know what I mean? Um, Philip Redden says, Ruiz wins by decision. James Dagg says, I like Hunter. Salute, Mr. Boxer. Salute, bro. Fitness with D-Man says Ruiz be getting, he says Ruiz be getting knocked out. AJ will become champion again. We'll definitely see. Hopefully, you know, AJ going to have to have a game plan. I'm hearing people say, oh, the real AJ is going to show up. Big Femi's going to show up. He's, you know, he's mad now. And it's like, well, shit, uh, he shouldn't have been mad when he got hit with that left hook. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I get what people are trying to say. I know what you guys are saying. He's refocused. He's more dedicated. He's hungry. He wants his belts back. And to me, that's all great and it sounds good, but it's more things technically. You know what I mean? And people think that uh, I always go at AJ's like, yeah, we're always going to go at the top elite guys and, uh, you know, try to dissect everything they say and do because they're the, you know, the upper echelon of the sport right now in the division. But in my humble opinion now, uh, I'm a fan on here, right? Talking, right? So I'm just talking shit, right? But to me, in my opinion, man, um, going backwards on treadmills and ducking under poles and touching light sensors and all that shit, that he, all, you know, all the cam, you know, all the uh, lights and lasers and all that type of stuff. Those things can't hit you back. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, I don't see how that helps. I just think sparring guys that have that present that type of style, that fight in that manner, that have quick hands, just sparring will get you better. Practicing fighting will get you better at fighting. You dig what I'm saying? Like, uh, so I think just more of that should be implemented, man. You know what I mean? But uh, AJ is saying that, you know, he doesn't need to change anything. Uh, I was, he was hearing something about them bringing in a wrestler. Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Did y'all hear that too? Him bringing in, uh, AJ's team bringing in a wrestler. And my thing is this. this see, this is where I think you need some of the old school help, man. Because look. A guy like Stacey McKinley, Don Turner, um, Ronnie Shields, guys like that, they already know that for a bigger heavyweight, you have to add in. Uh, is that not true, y'all, about the wrestler thing? I'm going to speak on it because we're talking about it on EJ's channel, but I don't know if it's true or not. But if it is true, here's what I have to say about it. All right. Old school trainers already know that you have to implement how to lean on a guy. Put him in the headlock sometimes. Put your body weight on him. Get back to the jab. Wrap him up. If he's a left hooker on the inside, wrap up his left arm and then circle him away from it. They're already going to throw you those types of things. You don't need to bring in an uh, Olympic-style wrestler to teach you how to do that. Now, can an Olympic-style wrestler show you some grapple moves? Well, of course. That's what they do. But this isn't wrestling, right? This isn't wrestling. This isn't running on a treadmill backwards. I know so most people say Mr. Boxing just to work on his, his stamina. To me, I'm big on either you have good stamina or you don't. Yes, you can do things, exercises to try to, you know, better your stamina, but either you're a guy that gasses in fights and then you have to find your second win pretty much in all your fights. That's just how you are. That's how you're just made up as an athlete. You dig what I'm saying? 
Some people have great stamina. Just Dennis, you know, I know it's different sport like Dennis Rodman. This dude in basketball probably had the greatest stamina I've, I've ever seen of an athlete, man. I know uh, LeBron James has the longevity and he's a freak, you know, uh, as far as athletically. But, man, Dennis Rodman has to be right there. It never looked like he was fucking tired, ever. And there's guys that are perceived to be greater players than him that you can tell when they were tired and gassed and needed to take, you know, uh, you know, a couple minutes timeouts. But look, man, the rematch is happening. All these questions will be answered, man. Let me see here. Timothy Moan, what's good, brother? Y'all check out my man Tim Moan. I believe he is. What are you, Tim? What are you? Five and zero, oh, six and zero, oh, heavyweight out of Louisville. Check him out, man. But he says, uh, "Big news coming soon. Stay tuned." Hey, Tim. Are you in or have you been receiving any calls or being in any training camps? Um, since you're here in the live chat, man, let's, you know, get some news out there on you right now, bro. So have you been communicated or have teams communicated with you to be in their camps? Have you been in some camps of some uh, more known heavyweights? Let us know. But you say you got big news coming soon. Y'all be on the lookout for Timothy Moe, man, heavyweight out of Louisville. Uh, Milo 2243 says AJ better have an effective jab or he will be getting knocked out. Yes, he definitely got to work behind that stick, man, and, and know how and when to use it. You know what I mean? Tyrone Smith says, Yeah, I think Hunter beats Kuzman. Easy salute, Mr. Boxing. Appreciate that. Yeah, I got um I got Hunter in that fight. That's that's gonna be a good one. Lamont was good. He says, Is we gonna look back at the only guy who fought everybody will be Wilder? Man, we'll see, bro. That's why you know what I'm saying. God willing, this is this uh, is still here. We're still here. We'll come back and we'll revisit this, man. James Daggs, he says, uh, was Andrew Ruiz Jr. born in the U.S. or Mexico? Uh, damn, I believe he's Mexican descent. His his mom and dad, they're from there. And then he was born here in the U.S. in Cali. I believe that's how it goes. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's how it went. Uh... Arjun Gunnathby says, I am back in Ruiz 100%. Tyrone Smith says, Ruiz was born in Cali. Okay. Uh, Arjun Gunnathby, okay. Uh, Mala 2243 says, smart will move to bring in wrestler. AJ needs to learn how to tie up. But see, Mala, man, that's what I'm saying, though, bro. Like, that's why I think he needs help from an old school American trainer that knows those tidbits already. You don't need to bring a wrestler in. Look, like I was saying, a Stacey McKinley, James Ali Bashir. They know that a big guy needs to know how to wrap a little guy up, lean his weight on him, tie him up, put him in a headlock on the clinch sometimes and make the ref break you. All those big guy tricks, old school American trainers already know that type of shit. That's easy. Go down to the heavyweight factory. Man, uh, Shane and Briggs and all them trainers that be up in there, they can throw you that one. If it's that type of stuff he needs, he need, I just think he needs to come over here because there's different styles of fighting, right? There's the Eastern European the traditional standing straight up there's the as, as they call it the slick american way of fighting but there's little tips and tricks you know what i mean bernard hopkins could have thrown on that one you dig what i'm saying but hey if they think bringing in a wrestling coach will help him by all means bring in whoever you think you need if they think they need a, a navy seal to come in and bring in what you need man you dig what i'm saying but i think uh an old school coach always going to throw you those type of little tidbits man bftb what's good brother what's good my man bftb boxing in the house um let me see tyron smith says yeah like tony former high school qb less than 40 amateur fights all he did was far an all-time great second favorite fighter of all time behind floyd patterson speaking of left hooks and ruiz left hook floyd patterson had a devastating left hook man involved in one of the best to me, one of the most underrated trilogies against uh, Igor Mar Johansson. Um, I usually try to watch that their three fights at least once a year, man. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, JT was a guy. Yeah, I remember Manuel Stewart talking about it during the, I believe it was the Jerov Tony telecast. I believe it was that fight. But they were talking about how James Tony, one thing he did was spar. Didn't really do no role work. Didn't really do no ab work at heavyweight. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, just did a lot of sparring. Just sparred and sparred some more and just sparred again. And man, you guys seen the clips on YouTube. James Tony would get into it with dudes in a parking lot. Just a very confrontational dude. You know what I mean? Brother, he was sparring with his 
uh, verbally or he was sparring with them hands with you. JT was definitely confrontational. Uh, probably my top 10 favorite fighters of all time were all heavyweights, but JT, uh, and I've said it before on here, is probably my favorite non-heavyweight. I know he moved up to heavyweight, but I'm when he wasn't at heavyweight, all right? So I, I, he moved up to heavyweight. But you guys get what I'm saying. Back when he's at his smaller weights, um, at super mental, things like that. Um, he's right there, one of my favorites, along with Tommy Hearns, man. Dig what I'm saying? But yeah, I know JT fought at heavyweight, all right? But I still consider him a small guy, all right? But he, yes, he did fight at heavy. Let me see. Corner Girl 66 says, this should be a good fight. Joshua need to work on his jab and keep in distance. Yeah, he's going to have to fight long and rangy, man. We'll, we'll see if he can sustain that distance is not his bread and butter fighting off his back foot that's not him yes he can do it in spurts and in spots but by nature he is an aggressive fighter his idol is who iron mike tyson when you see aj come out when you see you'll see aj sometimes put the high guard up and he'll kind of weave weave who used to do that mike tyson he has that he has a a come forward finish you destroy your mindset so it's hard to have that mindset and say, all right, I'm going to try to be Larry Holmes this round. Yeah, you'll do it in spots, but one, once you get hit one time, you're going to go. You gonna revert back to put the guards up in front of your face, side to side, weave, come in and try to destroy. That's his mindset is of a destroyer. So when people say things like, he rushed in too fast and tried to finish Ruiz, he's a finisher. He finishes you off in combination form. This dude has over 90% KO percentage. So when he smells blood alone, that's like when, when Wilder gets you hurt, they go because they smell blood. Look, whether you hate or dislike AJ or Wilder, when they smell blood, they're going to try to knock your fucking head off. So he did what he would always do. He just got caught. It's just, it, look, it's simplicity, man. It's simple as that. It's like, it's simple, look, it's simple, man. He just got caught with a calculated defensive move from Ruiz. He rolled under, came up with his best counterpunch, his left hook. He just got caught. And he actually landed a good right hand on Ruiz when Ruiz got right up. Bow, hit him with a good right hand. Just couldn't finish him. He ate the motherfuckers like M&Ms or I guess Snickers. You know what I'm saying? He, he, just, he, just, he just ate them up, man, like Pac-Man. You know what I mean? So AJ has, in my opinion, has the mindset of a Mike Tyson. Yeah, he's six foot six, but he has that mindset of a Mike Tyson as far as the way they want to approach fights in their styles and coming forward and you know put the high you know put the guard up in front and bob and weave and work his way in he wants to try to finish you so he's a finisher so i don't think he just rushed in yeah he rushed in but he was doing what he always does you know what i mean but hey man you know i'm just do talking shit on the internet though you know what i mean let me see uh all right, Tony Delgado, what to do, bro? He says, greetings. Greetings to you too, man. BFTB says, I seen you in EJ channel, but I don't mess with the haters that be on there. So I just listen to the guy cook. Oh, I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, I was on EJ, man. I had to go ahead and uh, grace the channel. I haven't uh, list, been listening to EJ for years, bro. And I think I've never been on his channel. I've been on a panel with EJ uh, years ago, but I've never been on his channel, man. So... Definitely want to show the brother some love, man, uh, and get on his channel, represent one time. You dig what I'm saying? BFTB says, uh, if AJ don't use his jab, he has no chance to beat Ruiz. Um, I definitely agree. And even though I think he's an aggressive, aggressive finisher type guy, still needs to pop a jab, an authoritative jab, like the way George Foreman would do it. Not a retreating jab. That's just not him. And he don't have the snap on it because you can throw a retreating jab and snap that motherfucker out there. Larry Holmes used to do it where he'll pop, pop. I mean, he literally is working off the back foot. You know, I'm kind of dancing around right now, doing, but, you know, you dancing around, moving and grooving, juking the jive, and you can pop the, and you literally like a bull with from the hip pop. Like you can hear the motherfucker pop it, even if it hit the other guy's glove. He don't snap it. He don't move in that. You know what I mean? He ain't got that rhythm, baby. He don't he don't move in that type of rhythm, man. You know what I mean? He's a come forward, authoritative, you know, throw uh, authoritative type of jab guy. You dig what I'm saying? Um, but he just needs to try to keep the distance. You don't have to try to be Larry Holmes, but he just needs to try to keep the distance. Uh, I just his fluidity doesn't. He's just not fluid, man, to handle a 
how like Ruiz, in my opinion. I know he knocked Ruiz down. Yeah, but Ruiz got right back up too, though. You dig what I'm saying? He ain't knocked, but he got right back up. You know what I mean? And committed to outbox him and then outwork him and beat him up when they were close quarters. But we got the rematch coming. We're going we gonna to see what happened. All right. Uh, D Lo 404 Boxing was good. Oh, my man, Blood Boxing in the house. Retro Boxing the documentaries. My man, Blood. I heard AJ was acting like a bully, <laughs> a bully child today. Yo, Blood, to me, man, he was his normal self. He was his normal, like I always like to say, uh, you know, giving out his, uh, you know, philosophies and being very philosophical. And you know how he talks, man. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, it's the same AJ I've been hearing for years now. So to me, it was just normal AJ. Um, look kind of salty to not be champion. And look, and look, there's another thing, Blood. I, this, this is what I'm going to say. Uh, the way he views things, you can tell it's totally different from Andy because, you know, Joshua, he loves to say this thing where, and I, and I guess it makes, technically it does make sense, but he'll say something like uh, where he likes to say, uh, I'm the champion right now, but the night of the fight, the bills go up in the air and then we fight for those bills. You know, that type of thing. Ruiz like he hey Ruiz had that look like nah motherfucker you let the bills go up in the air no these are mine on fight night I'm the champion and you're fighting for my belts and I'm you know that's at least the mind the energy that he was giving off when because even AJ was saying that going into their first fight you know what I mean and he was Ruiz hold the bills Ruiz is looking like I can hold my bills tonight I ain't you know what I mean uh so it's different looking at both guys going into this presser versus the last one. You dig what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, AJ was being very charitable with his belts <laughs> going into that first one. That was just odd, man. That was odd. I, AJ said something in one of these interviews today about that situation. He's like, yeah, my neck was hurting and the belts and I didn't feel like, oh, it was, you know, more, to me, more excuses. You know, I'm, I'm hearing about my neck hurting and the belts were heavy and uh, wilder and, you know, just still not hey caught with some with a good ass left hook that fucked me up and then he commits it just to whoop me that's better than all the other things because he even brought up yeah man you seen i was you know kind of out of it had my mouthpiece out and it's like yeah and then you got punched too though let's not let's not leave that out that you got punched you know what i mean that's a very uh <laughs> that's a very key component that uh you also got punched too you know what i mean but the rematch gonna happen man we're gonna see what to do what to do man uh, <laughs> D-Lo 404 says a nice pick of one monster with two chumps on both sides of them. are you talking about the uh, picture <laughs> that I got up as a thumbnail uh, let me see Blood says uh, retro boxing documentary says AJ ass going to sleep again um, Marcus Johnson says salute to everybody Milo 2243 says I understand what you're saying about an old school coach knowing all the tricks but AJ doesn't want to change culture so I guess they have no option but to bring these specialists in man I hope you don't have too many specialists man I mean God you know like, again though it's all about how you run your camp and if that will be a smooth camp for him to bring in because look you're still okay like you're still bringing in somebody. So why not just, you know what I mean, bring in somebody that can uh, give you all that in one package, in one bundle. You know what I mean? I need a, a, a wrestling coach. I need a, a track coach. I need, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of coaches, man. Now, I'm not saying he's bringing in the track coach, but I'm just saying then bringing this guy and this person and this person and this person and this person. I would rather just bring in somebody that, you know, can have all that knowledge man and there's still guys like that out here you got to just reach out to them you know but hey if they want to take this route of bringing in bringing in specialists then you know do it you know do what you got to do uh let me see here let me see let me see hey turn that down son i don't feel like hearing that man son turn that down like hearing all that mumble rap. Hold on, y'all. Oh. All right. I'm gonna jump off in a minute, man, because they're gonna be in there hitting my son's gonna be in there hitting that bag. 
All right, let me see. AJ Reynolds was good, bro. He says, uh, well, first, Miss Boxing, salute. How are you? Marlo's Corner, what it do? AJ Reynolds says, uh, AJ has shown he can't take Andy's punch in odds or he will get hit again. Oh, yes, he definitely going to get hit again. Definitely going to get hit again. Um, look, that's another thing, y'all. Two things that will not be a factor, right? Two things that will not be a factor. The element of surprise will not be there for Andy Ruiz this time around. Styles make fights, certainly. Element of surprise, gone. AJ having that slight intimidation over some of his opponents, can't intimidate a dude that knock you down four times. That just don't make logical sense. How the fuck you gonna intimidate somebody that whooped you and made you quit in my eyes? You dig what I'm saying? So not to say that he was trying to come in and try to intimidate Ruiz the first time around, but at the same time, though, a guy, high KO percentage, knocks out everybody, unified champion, undefeated, has the look of a all it has the physical look of somebody that should be a champion in some damn sport. You dig what I'm saying? That is gone. It's deflated. You dig what I'm saying? But that element of surprise won't be there. You know, you know what I mean? Um my thing is people are questioning Andrew Ruiz's motivation. He just bought him a house. He about to get another big bag going into this. Is he hungry enough? Well, we can ask the same thing for AJ who's already got the silk pajamas on, already got a lot of money in the bank. If he goes down again, will he take a knee and say, man, you know what? <sighs> I done came from nothing. You know, will he start to reflect on his life and where he's been? You know what I mean? Shit, will he start to reflect? Will he say, I came from nothing. I won a gold medal. I've been a unified champion. I was able to be a Hall of Famer in Klitschko. You know what I mean? I held it down for some defenses, man. I don't, I don't really want this shit right now. Because he's made it, he's already made it clear that he has thought like that these last few months about is he sure of himself? This is what he said, y'all. I'm not making this up. This is what the man said. You dig what I'm saying? So it's not only will Andy, you know, will Andy Ruiz question himself, which I don't think he will, but shit, will Anthony Joshua? Will he, you, you know what I mean? Will, will he have a moment where he says, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't want no more of this, man. I got other business ventures and things on the side. I can make money. I'm already good. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like proving myself in this manner no more. You never know, man. This, this shit goes both ways. St. Cruz and what it do, bro. He says, uh, Ruiz had his feet together square when he was knocked down. Man, you know what I remember most when he knocked down, bro? Yeah, and he was standing kind of straight up because he uh, he was standing kind of straight up and he got hit with a uh, left hook, right uppercut left hook. But one thing that I noticed, man, and it's, it's, it's funny how, you know, just by inch or two, how things can go either way in sports. Bro, the way he landed on his right arm, I'm surprised he didn't like dislocate his shoulder or uh, fuck up his elbow or something, man. I just think if he had, you know, if the if the angle was a little bit different, but you just never know, man. You dig what I'm saying? So I'm when he went down, I was like, damn, did he break his arm? Like I literally thought the man probably smashed his arm. Let me see here. Yeah, uh Blood. I actually I actually listened to that live stream when you and uh, BFTB was on there. I believe D Style actually joined that stream late on that stream. But yeah, I'll be I'll be catching EJ. Definitely rock with EJ, man. Him and Ingram. There's a few cats from the UK that I, that I, that I rock with. That I've been rocking with for shit going on 10 years now, bro. But I'll be catching EJ. I've seen BFTB on there. D-Style, yourself. A few of y'all. Dan the Man. B-Marsh. Uh, let me see. St. Cruz in. Okay. Okay, my man St. Cruz, huh? he's the OG, he says, uh, if AJ's chin is as weak as I think, technique won't matter. That's a good point. Uh, Blood says, damn, bro, BFTB, okay. You're talking, you're going back and forth with BFTB. BFTB says, uh, AJ going to get hit a lot and dropping all that weight and water around the brain is going to get this dude knocked out badly. Yeah, bro, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of dropping a whole bunch of weight. Look. 
when you start now, okay, we tell a guy that hey, you need to make some changes, and then they start changing. We say, oh, he's getting nervous. So sometimes as fans, we be leaving, <laughs> we be leaving fighters in the lose lose sometimes, right? But there's certain changes when I see them happening where I scratch my head. One of them being, uh, whenever, all right, now this is kind of like me. You know, like with a broad or a female that you don't really rock with no more, and she'll do something like cut all her hair off or just do some crazy shit. You know what I mean? So when I start seeing fighters get like just crazy, just crazy tattoos out of nowhere, uh, I know AJ got one on his finger, uh, but after losses, it's like they almost have like an identity crisis, like a mini. <laughs> Like a mini identity crisis, man. Get crazy haircuts or cut their hair off or get some crazy tattoo or, you know what I mean? Uh, start losing a whole bunch of weight that, you know, I don't know, man, but it's more technical. And I, I think from his perspective, he's looking at it like, look, man, if I lose this weight, I'll be able to move around more fluidly. And to me, it's like, bro, either you have it, either you're made up to be able to move like that, moving and grooving, shaking and shaking, even you're made up to be like that, or you're just not. Look, I know Emmanuel Stewart used to have a good thing that he used to do with Klitschko, um, and this is documented. Uh, he would play James Brown, Michael Jackson. I don't give a damn if you're the stiffest, ain't got no damn rhythm. Uh, every time you went to the club, you was a wallflower. It don't matter, bro. If Michael Jackson and James Brown can't get you to dance, even if you ain't got no damn rhythm, you just ain't got no soul in you at all. But he will play their music while Klitschko will be warming up, not to, you know, just to make him move and just do different things with his feet and his hips and his knees. You know what I mean? Just kind of try to move to the beat a little bit. Uh, Roy Jones used to do it where he would, uh, I know a lot of his training camps, he would be playing rap music or, you know, playing music. Uh, like Run DMC or different songs. I've seen him doing it going into the John Ruiz fight. They did a little docu on ESPN and he would kind of move to the beat of the song and throw punches to the rhythm and the lyrics and the beat of the song. You know, you know what I'm saying? I just don't think AJ is made up like that. You know what I mean? Now, I'm sure the dude probably knows how to dance, but I'm talking about being able to move in a rhythm like that as you're fighting. I don't think he's made, I don't think as an athlete, he's made up like that. Just my opinion on man. I don't think he's made up like that. Doesn't mean the man can't be successful. You know what I mean? But him trying to just add that, uh, and me thinking, I'm thinking he's trying to add that because he's lost all his weight. And I'm thinking he's probably like, man, I lost all his weight. I should be able to move better. We'll see. We will see. Give me a second, y'all. Hold on. All right, y'all, about to get this workout in, man. Let me see. d 44 Boxing was good. Appreciate that super chat, man. Uh, boxing Conversations with... Oh, okay, he said with super chat. d 44 Boxing super chat. He says, how he says how big a deal you think of ref selection will be? Hopefully, they let somebody just let them work on the inside, man. I don't want a ref that as soon as they touch, break, don't punch. Because Ruiz likes to work on the inside. Plus, he's a sneaky, crafty puncher to where... He'll be in a clinch with you, but he'll use his offhand. The hand is not wrapped up in the clinch to hit you with his free hand. He punches with his free hand. He don't use his free hand to look for another part of your arm to clinch. He lets his hands go. You know what I mean? So, but he has to be quick on the draw with it. You know what I mean? Um, the ref going to have to let him work, man. But I think him, that's just my main concern is the ref is going to let him work on the inside. Uh, let me try to run through these real quick, man. I can't get to all of these, y'all, because I'm going to have to. Ronald Finkley was good. Um, let me see. <laughs> Blood says, according to the Dark Chuckers, Ruiz was scared. Oh, boy. But you know how that is, Blood, though. You know what I mean? Ruiz is Ruiz, bro. Like, take it from me, Blood. And I've been covering Ruiz for, for a minute, man. That's just that dude's. I don't know if you're talking about if they were saying, because that, that sounded like some shit they would say, the extremes over there, that uh, he was scared at the presser. You know what I mean? If that's what you're talking about. 
bullshit, man, because Ruiz always has that type of demeanor. You know what I mean? You don't know if Ruiz is getting ready for a fight or if he's getting ready to enjoy a cheeseburger. That's just the demeanor he has. And Anthony Joshua is definitely not going to make him scared. Uh, boxing conversations with Red Jones was good, brother. Omega Red was good. All right, y'all. Damn, man. Let me see. Renee Salcedo was good. Stormy B, man. Let me... Hold on, man. What's good, Stormy B, man? Y'all go subscribe to my man, Stormy B, man. BFTB Boxing. My man, Retro Boxing. The documentaries. Go subscribe to all of them. Hey, y'all, look, man. I appreciate y'all showing up. Y'all know how it is with my live streams. I just pop up, you know what I mean? Uh, out of nowhere. But I appreciate y'all definitely stopping by. Uh, Till next time, though, man. We're going to chop it up again, y'all. Y'all be good. I'm gone.